Hello, I'm Howard Martin, Executive Vice President with HeartMath, co-author of the books The HeartMath Solution and Heart Intelligence, and I'm one of the producers of the HeartMath Experience. First of all, I want to thank you for choosing to become an Ad Heart facilitator and taking your first step into the ecosystem of formal heart math training and joining with many others around the world who are choosing to add more heart to their lives and the lives of others. In this course, you're going to learn basic heart math concepts, some of the science that underpins the heart math system, a three-step technique for increasing your own connection to your heart's intelligence and sharing with others, and you're going to learn about your inner balance trainer. The inner balance trainer will be covered in module three, so soon I would like you to go to your favorite app store and download the inner balance trainer app. Let me tell you how the course is structured. There are six modules, about 30 minutes in length. You also have a guidebook you'll use to follow along and do written exercises. There are additional PDFs that will expand your learning. During the course, you'll hear from others. You'll find out about stories and best practices and exercises that you'll do to help you internalize this material and give you the confidence to go out and add heart to the world. Now, this is a self-paced learning program, so take your time with it. I suggest that you take a module, practice what you learn before you take the next module. Getting that connection with yourself with the material is gonna give you more impact and more power to take this work into the world. Now here's what I really hope you gain from taking the Ad Heart Facilitator course. I want you to have made a deeper connection with your own heart's intelligence, that place inside where you find that true authentic self and that self-security. I also want you to come away with a new skill set, a new understanding about this material so that you can go out and effectively share it in personal and professional situations to improve the lives of others, to help them increase their intuition, improve their health, increase their performance, and a lot more. I want you to feel inspired, confident, and motivated to take this work forward and work together to help create a more heart-based world. Let's get started. We all know that the heart is an organ that's pumping blood through our body tirelessly from birth to death. But in the heart math experience, you also learn that the heart is an important information processing center, sending information to the brain and to the rest of the body. You're gonna learn more about that later in this program. In the heart math experience, we talked a lot about emotions and about emotions that are associated with heart. Emotions that are in a way, you know, come from that part of ourselves that we call heart. They are some of the highest quality emotions that we ever experience, and they would include emotions like love, care, appreciation, kindness, patience, courage, and compassion. The heart is also associated with a deeper wisdom, an intuitive knowingness that bypasses logical linear thought patterns. An intelligence that, when we feel it, can give us the ability to make more effective and better choices in life. Heart is really at the core of who we are, our true authentic self. And when we're in touch with that place, that's when we can do things in life to overcome our obstacles and, and surprise ourselves with what we can really accomplish. Heart is at the very core of who we are as human beings. And when we're in touch with the heart, it brings out the very best in who we are. Heart is also that place we go inside for self-security. When life is tough and we don't have answers, it's often the heart that we turn to. For example, in those moments when I've had challenges that I could not find the answers for, I would look for direction by going deeper within, within myself, to my heart. Perhaps you've done the same. In those instances, we may not get total resolution, the clarity about the problem that's confronting us, but often our inner dialogue will change. We may say things to ourselves like, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this, but you know what? I've gotten through tough things before, and I'll get through this one. That's heart. What I've learned about heart is that it's my own best friend and my most reliable guide for making decisions, big and small, about anything I do in life. An important aspect of this program is about sharing. With that said, whether you're sharing with someone in the type of work that you do, or with your family or your friends, adding heart, adding those qualities and your core authentic self only improves the outcomes. 
Let's look at what adding heart could feel like in a practical day-to-day -day context. Have you ever had those times in your life when you really felt like you were in the flow, when you were really at your best? Perhaps you can remember times when your mind was not so busy trying to figure everything out and you really felt more connected to the people you were with, the environment you were in, and to life itself. We've had these heart-related experiences at times, and as you will learn, you can recreate them more consistently. Now, if that ability were to be cultivated in many people, think about what it could do for society. We know from conducting 25 years of scientific research and training many thousands of people that important outcomes have been achieved by people simply adding more heart to what they do. Health professionals, for example, doctors, nurses, counselors, psychologists, therapists have seen big improvements in patient outcomes by adding heart, they're using heart math techniques and technology. Improvements in heart arrhythmia, blood pressure, asthma, diabetes, anxiety, depression, and a lot more. In family and relationship settings, communication has been improved and conflicts have been resolved more easily. In today's business environment, heart is now a lot more accepted. And to be honest, I feel adding heart is essential in making better business decisions, improving communication, especially with our coworkers, and to remain resilient. We've seen leaders be able to inspire their companies in new ways that engender more innovation and more creativity. In essence, adding heart can have a direct application on business outcomes. Athletic performance, that's a good one. That's another area where adding heart can create improvements. We've trained professional athletes, golfers, football, baseball and basketball players, and even Olympians in simple heart math tools and techniques that have been shown to improve their athletic performance. The educational setting is another area where we have done a lot of work. We care about children. We care about the well-being of young people. We've trained many, many teachers, and we've worked in academic institutions and universities when applying heart math tools and technology to the educational process, we've seen student behaviors change and actual test scores have been shown to be improved. These are all just examples that you can possibly draw from to consider how adding heart is going to benefit you and your ability to help others. Here's something I want you to know. Adding heart is non-competitive. It does not take away from any of the practices you already use. It just adds another effective component to what you do. Simply said, adding heart to whatever you do can only improve the process and outcomes. Now, during time since our inception, way back now in 1991, we've been developing very simple but effective scientifically validated techniques that allow us to unfold and apply the qualities of the heart. There are many techniques within the heart mass system taught in our other certification programs. In this course, you will again learn and experience the heart lock-in technique. As you may remember from the heart math experience, there are three steps in the technique. You can use them individually or sequentially. Let's review the first step now. This first step is called heart-focused breathing, and we're gonna do it together right now. Here's the step. I want you to focus your attention in the area of the heart, area in the center of your chest. Now I'd like you to imagine your breath is flowing in and out through your heart or chest area, breathing a little slower and deeper than usual. Just find an easy rhythm that's comfortable for you. Just try to feel the energy up in your head now descending into the area of the heart. Keep your focus there and breathe deeply and slowly in a nice, steady rhythm that's comfortable for you. Now, as you breathe, imagine as if that breath is actually flowing in and out through the area where you have your focus, the area of the heart. Continue with your heart-focused breathing 
Let me explain what's happening inside your body. As you breathe this way, it's synchronizing your nervous system, in particular what's called your autonomic nervous system, which influences about 90% of all your body's functions. Synchronization between the two main branches in that system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, is improving. It's creating a balancing effect inside your body. This is regenerative. It's good for your health. It's op opening up more of the pathways of communication between your heart and your brain and the rest of your body. It's adding heart to your physiology as you breathe this way. Let's continue to practice right now. Try to feel that feeling inside of connecting with your heart as you do. Just continue to take slow, deep breaths, but in a natural way, in a rhythm that's comfortable for you. And again, imagine your breath is throwing in and out through your heart or your chest area. You may notice right now that you're feeling a bit calmer a bit more synchronized within yourself. It's a balancing type of feeling this step creates. And it's one of the quickest ways you can get someone to begin to add heart to themselves. I hope re-experiencing heart-focused breathing was helpful. There are a couple of things I want you to know when sharing heart-focused breathing with someone. First, it's perhaps surprising, but many people just don't know how to breathe. People don't pay much attention to their breath. Because of that, it can be a little bit awkward at first for someone to begin to pay attention to how they're breathing. It's also a bit different for someone to be focusing their attention in the area of the heart, and then imagine the breath is coming in and out through that area of the body. It may be helpful to get them to put their hand on their heart, for example. Just allow people a little time as you teach them the heart-focused breathing technique with recognition and acknowledgement that it could be a bit different for people because, as I said earlier, they don't pay much attention to how they're breathing. The second thing I'd like you to know is that you can do this technique with your eyes open or your eyes closed. Sometimes people can feel a bit uncomfortable closing their eyes. That's fine. You can share this step with them with their eyes open, if that's more appropriate for that person. Having someone close their eyes can help to create more focus and take some of the distractions and the environment, so to speak, out. But you don't have necessarily have to do this first step that way. Now, here are some ways that you may want to think about applying heart-focused breathing. Let's say you're working with someone. It could be your child. It could be someone that you're counseling. It could be an athlete you're coaching. Let's say you found that they were a little bit upset or maybe irritated. You could simply say, I have an idea. Let's do an exercise. It's called heart-focused breathing. It can help to create a more balancing and uplifting feeling. Let's do this together. I'd like you to focus your attention in the center of your chest, the area of the heart, and you take it from there. It's a great way to help someone feel calmer and more heart-connected. Maintaining a feeling of calm can be very beneficial. Emergency workers, for example, have to be very calm and focused and very balanced as they come up on the scene of an emergency. Often they just breathe deeply in a natural rhythm so that they can function at their highest best and do what needs to be done in that situation. Heart-focused breathing adds heart to the process. In life, we don't always have emergencies, but we certainly have a lot of upsets and a lot of times when we feel frustrated and when we feel angry. Use heart-focused breathing when you're feeling that way or trying to help someone or just calm down a little bit. Another way you might want to think about using this step is to stop an energy drain. A lot of times processing emotions over and over again, chewing on something is really using up a lot of energy robbing us of the quality of life. When you find yourself there, or when you're working with someone you recognize is in that place, interrupt the pattern. Help stop the energy drain. Just doing heart-focused breathing can be very effective for saving energy and start to shift perspectives in a different direction. 
Another effective time to use it is in transition points, in between things. For example, in that moment between home and work, when you've finished your work day, you're getting ready to walk into your home where you will be engaging with others, your spouse, your children, roommates, etc. There's a transition happening. You're moving from one environment to another. Practicing a little heart-focused breathing before going into the house can set a good tone for making that transition from work to home. Of course, doing it before an important phone call or maybe right when you get that email that upsets you and you're ready to respond in that moment, that would be a great time to go to that place inside and use a little heart-focused breathing. That pause can be a big energy saver and one that could really create a lot less stress in your life. These are examples of how and when you can use heart-focused breathing and a few tips on what you may run into as you share it. Here's a quick review of things to remember as you share heart-focused breathing. Recognize that breathing this way or conscious breathing in general is not always natural for people. Have patience with the people that you're working with. Remember, you can do this technique with your eyes open or your eyes closed. Some people are going to be comfortable with doing it with their eyes closed and some aren't. It just depends on the person and the setting that you're in. Use this step to create more balance, more calm, more harmony. Use it to reduce the feelings of anger, irritation, and frustration. Use it between events in your life, whether it's going from work to home or between one meeting to another, before an important phone call, or other types of communication. All of these are examples of where you can use heart-focused breathing. Here's one more, one more way you can use it, and it's a very effective uh, approach to using the technique. It's right before you're getting ready to go to sleep at night. As you lay on your bed and you're ready to go to sleep, do a little gentle heart-focused breathing. This can set the tone for a good night's sleep by putting you in a calmer, more relaxed place. Now you have reviewed the first step of the heart lock-in technique and learned about how you can best share it with others. Practicing this yourself is a very important part of the process of being an ad heart facilitator. Right now, think about situations in your life or times in the day when adding heart or doing heart-focused breathing would be appropriate. Just reflect a little right now on how adding heart and what you've done and what you've learned so far could have a positive impact on you as a person and on the people that you work with. Write down your ideas in your guidebook when you can. Between now and the time you begin module two, I'd like you to practice a little bit. The first thing I'd like you to do is to just observe where you see heart being added in life. It's going on all around us. It's a time in the world when heart is emerging in a new and very different way. Despite all the bad news we see, there's also a heart-centric world taking shape right now. Then, also observe where heart is lacking. Where could heart be added to save time and energy and to prevent conflict, stress, and discord? As you observe, get a sense of what you're really feeling, what's going on inside yourself as you see life from this perspective. If it feels a bit upsetting, if you see where heart is not being added in a situation, try to return to the comfort of your own heart and maybe practice heart-focused breathing. I'd also like you to formally practice heart-focused breathing for one to two minutes, three times a day. There are times when it's pretty easy to do it. In the morning before you start your day, just take a minute or two, pause and do heart-focused breathing. At some point in the day, it's really important to stop and pause and begin to make contact with your own heart's intelligence. Life gets very busy and we feel life is often just overwhelming us and we're just trying to keep up and never really catching up. When you find yourself in those moments, it's a good time to do heart-focused breathing and reconnect with your heart, with that core heart power. In this module, You've reviewed what heart is. You've learned more about what adding heart means. You've been given examples of how to use it, how to use the material that you've been getting in this program in both your personal and professional life. You've re-experienced the very simple first step of the heart lock-in technique, heart-focused breathing. And now you have a practice plan. 
we're at the end of this module and you've got new skills and some new understandings and some new things to do. In the next module, we'll take it to the next level. You'll get a new understanding of heart math research and you'll review and re-experience the second step of the heart lock-in technique. I'll see you in the next module.